I am a product marketing engineer on the current sensing team. So thank you so much for joining today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. I have one of my colleagues uh, who will be monitoring the chat, answering any questions as they come through. So here's an agenda. Uh, first, I'm going to just show a high voltage current sensing amplifier overview to show you where the INA241 and 296 fit in to the overall portfolio of the current sense amplifiers. And then I will jump into overviews of the individual devices, followed by showing some industry leading uh, information and then a getting started guide uh, along with some example use cases. So we consider high voltage current sense amplifiers at TI to be anything greater than 48 volts uh, with an analog output. So the INA240 is one of our flagship hero parts that we offer today. And the part is several years old now, uh, and it was time to do a refresh. Uh, but in the meantime, we have released an INA293 and a 290, which are higher voltage devices. However, they're only unidirectional. So in order to fulfill the gap, uh, we have released the INA296 and 241, um, which the INA241 is going to be the next generation INA240. Uh, both the INA296 and 241 are bi-directional 110 volt common mode devices with survivability up to 120 volts on the positive side and negative volts on the negative side. And then you can see some of the offset and gain error specifications here, along with the bandwidth of one megahertz on the INA296. And then on the INA241, there is a one megahertz bandwidth as well. However, the INA241 has the enhanced PWM rejection uh, technology, which is also found in the INA240. Uh, the enhanced PWM rejection technology rejects the error that may be caused from high dBdt switching signals. So that way you do not get an error on the output of the device. And then you can see the gains here. So something new and unique to the 296 and 241 is we're releasing a 10 volt per volt gain option that allows you to have a wider dynamic range um, of use there and these pro these products will be released in a SOT 23 package initially but we will have some follow-on uh, package options which can be found in the data sheet today the A versions are the high performance versions, and then the B versions, which are directly below those, are the lower performing versions. Um, you can see the offset and gain error specs have been relaxed uh, as a result of that. So again, the INA293, 281, these, this is going to be a unidirectional device, 290 and family, along with the 280 unidirectional devices. Now the 296 and 241, these are going to be the bidirectional high voltage. So that's where these particular products actually fit into the roadmap. So here's a one pager of the INA241A um, to give you a little perspective on the actual device. So the voltage range is from negative five to 110 volts. It is a bi-directional ultra precise current sense amplifier with the enhanced PWM rejection. Uh, these particular parts are ideal in line with a motor or something that's providing inductive kickback it really will minimize the amount of error that the output is is displaying uh, in these high dbdt sort of applications and then just running through some of the specs like i mentioned earlier the devices are capable and survivable uh, to negative 20 volts to 120 volts several gain options very very good cmmr is 150 db minimum so very good there. Offset 10 microvolts max. Uh, drift error 100 nanovolts per degree C maximum. Gain error 0.01 percent maximum, and the drift uh, gain drift is 0.1 ppm per degree C. So these are really ideal for switching applications. We spec it uh, switching applications with AC CMMR at. 100 kilohertz, um, which is about 104 dB. That information can be found in the data sheet. And then the slew rate on these devices is eight volts uh, per microsecond. So 
pretty quick devices, um, very good for the large inductive kickbacks or high DVD-T um, sort of applications. Following that is the B version with reduced specs. Uh, the offset is 15 times wider, so at 150 microvolts. The offset drift is also significantly wider um, at 500 nanovolts for degree C, gain error wider, and the drift error is also wider as well. Um, with the wider specs, you can expect a more cost-effective pricing option there. The INA-296A, um, fairly similar specs to the INA-241A. Uh, the main difference is going to be that the INA-296 does not have the enhanced PWM technology. It has the full bandwidth of one megahertz there. So any sort of switching that is occurring on the front end with the high DVD-T uh, there will be error that would be generated essentially on the output of this device. Um, so if you are using it in a high switching frequency application, it would be best to use a 241 uh, unless you don't care about that glitch that may appear on the output. <clears throat> but this is going to be the full, uh, full bandwidth, the full output range essentially of this. It, it reduces the blanking times in in various systems. And then again, the B version with uh, more relaxed specifications. So just putting the INA241, 296, and 240 on a table here gives you a little bit of perspective of the different specifications. So as you can see, the voltage range is increased the gain error is going to be reduced. The drift, depending on which device you choose, may have better drift or a more relaxed drift. Um, the drift over temperature, again, may be better or more relaxed. The voltage offset, as you can see on the A versions, is quite good at 10 microvolts, per, uh, yeah, 10 microvolts, and then the drift is also quite good at 0.1 microvolts per degree C. So very steady part. Uh, very, you know, very good part, very accurate part. CMMR is increased on the A versions, like mentioned earlier, up to 150 dB, where all the other versions are going to be 120 dB. So there's less error that is generated as the device sees different common modes. PSSR, power supply rejection ratio, is also quite good at 120 dB. So depending on where you set your power supply and where we've characterize the part, that kind of determines any additional error sources that may be there. Something that is pretty big on the 296-241 is the 296 and 241 have an increased supply range, so up to 20 volts, where the 240 is only good up to 5.5 volts, so it may, be, it may have more use in different systems. It allows you to have a wider output. One disadvantage to the new products is the higher IQ. Uh, which could be explained by the faster bandwidth, so using a little bit more power to get that faster bandwidth, but it's not super significant. It's about 0.4 milliamps greater. Uh, there are some other gain options as well. Like I mentioned, the 10 volt per volt is a new unique gain option to our product line, so we have never released a part with 10 volts per volt. This will be the first one. And then the IB on the the input bias is 30 microamps typical on the pins, essentially, and it's the same at 12 volts or 48 volts, just you know, depending on which device you're using. If you're using the 240, you can see here the, the IB is a little bit different. <clears throat> Bandwidth, like I mentioned earlier, 1.1 megahertz. Um, the 241s are going to be better for switching applications. You do get that PWM re rejection. Slew rate is quite good at eight volts per microsecond. And then the swing to ground is, is not as good, but still quite good. The temperature grade, um, as you can see here, is 125 degrees C. Um, and we'll, we'll be releasing in a SOT23 package. There are some variants today released on PI.com um, in an RP, RTM state. 
and some in an APL state. <coughs> so here we're giving a little bit of perspective of the, off, the very low offset drift. So it's, it may be a little difficult to see, but this is an RSS, RSS error curve. Um, and we're giving you some indication here of what kind of error there would be over, over the current range. So as you can see, the the slope here is very steep as you, you know you approach one amp, and then it essentially goes completely linear um, after say maybe two two and a half amps. It's essentially linear, so it's very linear through that whole whole range. Uh, once you do you know bias that part, the offset drift at 0.1 microvolts per degree C. Um, here I'm giving some perspective of what one microvolt per degree C, five microvolt per degree C, and then ten microvolt per degree C looks like. As you can see, the blue line, which is the 0.1 micro, microvolt per degree C is very, very flat, um, indicating very low error um, over temperature, essentially. So a very stable part. And then showing very similar curve to the one above, the gain error. So the gain error really just helps with that full scale uh, current range measurement, uh, not providing any sort of additional error sources into that uh, into that output. And then again, here's the drift uh, coefficient of 1.0 ppm per degree C on the A versions and just kind of indicating what that looks like in comparison to some of the other drifts that may be out on the marketplace today. And as you can see, our drift is very, very low, um, very minimal there. And then CMMR uh, is high as 166 dB. So 166 is the typical. Um, the minimum, like I mentioned earlier, is 150. And then the AC CMR, which we classify at 100 hertz, is 104 dB. So the DC CMR really enables accurate measurements in high voltage systems doesn't introduce additional error sources as you move across the common range, common mode voltage range. And then the AC CMMR reduces the need for filtering for all frequencies. It, it just provides you a, a clean signal output essentially and very stable. So inline current sensing, um, harsh motor control environments. The INA241, it would be more expected to be used in motor style applications, especially with the enhanced PW PWM rejection technology. So what we expect from these is large inductive kickbacks. You can see here, you have the input common mode voltage signal into the motor, so you're PWMing that. Uh, and then the output would be, you know, something along this is what, kind of what you're looking for. With the enhanced PWM rejection, we're able to smooth that output out. So that way you're not getting so much of a, of a glitchy answer. Uh, it's a little bit more smooth and the, the, the system can then process that information a, a little bit better. Um, current measurements for applications employing PWM control method for transistors, you know, can also be used in motor and solenoid controls. So anything that, you know, is using a similar configuration to this. And then be able to reject that high DVDT with the PWM is, is pretty critical. Um, it really does provide a minimal observable output glitch with the PWM. And it does operate over a very wide range um, as well. So it, it helps accommodate that voltage during the flyback period of a typical solenoid. So here is a comparison of what it looks like from a competitor and what it looks like from us. So we are on the top and this is essentially what that output wave would look like, the blue line on the very, very top. Um, and then the green line would be the PWM switching. 
And as you can see, there is a small glitch, um, but it's very minor and very short. Whereas the competitor, it's seeing a fairly, fairly large glitch there. Um, and that could potentially trigger an issue maybe in your overall system when you're monitoring that. So if you're able to reduce that as much as possible, it gives you a tighter system, gives you more control, more precision, overall, just a better solution um, for the customer. So really just getting started. Um, so there are product folders. There are several product folders in the way that we did name this product. So the INA 241A, B296, A and B. You can see the product folders over here on the right. Um, the devices will officially be RTM'd, all of them within the next couple of days. Uh, all of them are in an APL state right now, so there are samples available in the TI store. If you do not see a particular gain version that you would like in the TI store, please talk with your TI representative and we'll, we'll work with them to get you the samples that you're looking for. In terms of reference design, so we do not have anything specific yet for the INA241. Uh, but if you do look at the INA 240 reference designs, the INA 241A or B uh, could be, in theory, used to replace the 240 in a lot of those reference designs. So that would be a good starting point. We do have a option right now um, to do second sourcing with small packages. So technically, the INA 241 is not a pin for pin alternative today to the 240. However, we do have a, a way to basically show you how to design your PCB in such a way that you could interchange the INA 240 and 241 fairly easily. So it'd be a good to take a look at this second sourcing for small package amplifiers. The P-SPICE the P -SPICE models are available today. They are in the product folder, so please go take a look at those. And then evaluation modules as well. Uh, we will have EVMs in the store. I believe the 241 is out of stock today, but it will be replenished shortly, and 296 should be there as well. So that is the INA241-296. So. Thank you, Kyle. I, we will go ahead and open up the floor for any questions. Please feel free to unmute yourself or you can uh, use the chat. Okay. All right, well, thank you for attending today's MPU webinar. The recording and PDF version of the slides will be available at www.ti.com slash MPU. We hope to see you next Thursday at 10 a.m. for the topic, New Cost Optimized High Performance MCU Solution for Real-Time Control. If you have any final questions, please feel free to ask them via chat. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you.